Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I'm going to work on a page in my Large Ranger Delusions journal. Um, in my Paper Art Doll Parade number three, I featured this cute paper doll that I had made, and her name is um, Time Flies. And nobody gave her a home. She's got a little three dimensional clock up here and a feather and she's just super cute so I'm gonna give her a home in my art journal and I've got a really fun idea for the page that I'm gonna create so I thought you'd like to watch first I'm gonna go through my folder of watch and clock images I have been saving clocks and watches from Vogue magazines Mademoiselle a book about antiques anything I can find on clocks and watch faces. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to find a bunch of clocks to use on my page layout as focal points. So in my stash I found a bunch of fun images to play with and um, what I will do next obviously is to fussy cut them out and I make sure that there's nothing on the back and I also if I come across something that's really special like this came out of a book about antiques and this clock is from 1850 and it is a rare acorn shaped clock and the paintings are of lower lower manhattan in 1850 and it's just such a unique clock and a unique shape that i might want to use it or the images on the back side for something else so what i'm going to do is put it on my little cheap canon uh, scanner printer that i have uh, it was just a 30 dollar printer i'm going to put it on that scan it and print out a color copy onto cardstock so that i can use this image but not damage the original or the other side because i think that i will probably want to use these at another time so once i get my images all uh, scanned printed the ones that i want to save or the uh, magazine images that i want to go ahead and just trim out i'm going to fussy cut everything out and then we'll move on to the next step. For my background I think I want to do another ombre page. Um, the last time I did a video I showed you how to do ombre from light to dark and on this page I want instead of the dark being at the bottom I want the dark at the top and it's easier to do an ombre uh, coloring starting with your lightest color so what you'd want to do for that is to turn your book upside down do your light to dark just like in the previous video that I showed and then before you apply your things you have to remember this so you don't do your page upside down applying your focals you would turn it back around and now it's going to be darker at the top and lighter at the bottom and you're ready to apply your focals with your book in the right direction so that's what I'm going to do here and since I already showed that on a previous video, I'm not going to show you uh, how I'm doing my background. You can refer to the previous video. I'll put a li link in the description box below. So if you want to learn how to do an ombre background, you can uh, watch the previous video and know how I completed my background this time. So I did my ombre, my book upside down, from light to dark. I did um, or yellow to orange. And now I'm going to flip my book over so now I flipped my book over so now I'm back with my book being the way it's supposed to be and it's dark at the top and light at the bottom I like that okay now the next thing I'm going to do is take some hand sanitizer and I'm going to drop some hand sanitizer onto my page just like that sprinkle it on wait a little minute and then I'm going to take a paper towel and pick up the hand sanitizer so that I get a spotted look to my background wherever the hand sanitizer was will pick up the paint and you end up with some really neat effects and if you want more of it then just keep going until you get it the way that you want it so I did a little bit more of the hand sanitizer and I love the result it looks really cool makes for a fun background and now I need to just make sure that it's totally dry before I start doing matte gel medium and putting my images down on the page. 
And I'm starting to lay out my watch and clock images that I have trimmed out. And originally I was going to use this really cool looking clock because I love the shape of it. But it's really too big for what I'm trying to do on this page. So I decided to go with this one instead. I love this image. And so I just scanned it and printed it onto cardstock so I can keep my original for another time and I'm going to trim this one out. And then I have an idea, a really fun idea, that I'm going to use this pocket watch image for. So I'm going to do something fun with that. So I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do. Here are all the clock and watch images I'm going to use and I've got them laid out on my page with my focal girl here and this one is going to be really special so I've got an idea for that one and for this one over here I'm going to take this picture of some crane birds and I'm going to use the wings from it and I'm going to add this like this to put the wings on this clock that goes right here so I'm going to use those and then I'm going to apply this down to some cardboard and separate the two pieces and I'm going to show you a really fun and interesting idea for this one. So I'm going to use matte gel medium. I like Tri Art. You can use any brand for your art journaling. And I'm going to go ahead and remove my girl because I want to put her on last. I want her over the images. And this one of course is going to be on some cardboard and I know it goes here. But I'm going to start applying down these where I know they're going to go. And I like to put a little bit of matte gel medium on the page and on the back of the image and then apply it down and then put some over the top. And that makes them come out nice and smooth with hardly ever any wrinkles. And if you have a little edge you can stick a little underneath. Pieces like this, this was done making it on a texture plate. I'm going to go ahead and use glue to glue that down. It's just some art glitter glue. But the magazine images are all going to be done with the matte gel medium. I applied this pocket watch image to a piece of cardboard. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut the image out. And what I'm going to do is right where the um, circle ends right here. I'm going to separate these, the top and the bottom parts of the image, just like. So I've glued this piece down to cardboard. I've cut the two pieces out, and now I'm going to put them on the page where I want them to go, and just kind of find a spot for them, which I think I want it to be about like this. So what I'm going to do is take my pencil and I'm going to make a circle around this one. Let's trace that one. And I'm going to just put a little bit of marking so I know where to line this one up. And this top piece I'm going to glue into place. I'm going to use art glitter glue and just Put glue on here and I'm not going to glue down the circle part at the bottom. So I'm putting glue everywhere and leaving that bottom half of that circle. I'm going to line this up to where I had the little markings so I know where to put it and glue that into place. Next I'm going to take some blue paint. This is cobalt blue. And I'm going to paint the middle part of that circle. And I might have to use a couple coats to get it solid. While the paint dries in that circle, I'm going to take these two little pieces of clip art and trim them out. Next, I'm going to take some Neo Color 2 crayons and I'm going to just add some color from the edge in just to give this circle a little bit more color and depth instead of just being one flat 
color. So all I'm doing here is just coloring with it and then using the warmth of my finger to blend out the Neo color. Now I'm going to take a water brush with just the bristles just slightly damp and just kind of lightly brush it to blend it a little bit so that there's no coloring lines. That's just to get the circle a little more interest. You have to be careful not to over blend it because as you can see the water brush can reactivate the acrylic paint and pick up the paint. And I don't want that to happen. Okay, I'll just blend a little more with my finger. And for what I need it for, that looks pretty good. I like it. And now I'm going to glue my two little images into place within the circle. Next, I'm going to take a gold Posca pen. This is a um, 0.7 millimeter gold Posca pen and I'm going to go all around this edge right up to that pencil line and make a nice even gold ring around the image. Now I'm going to let that gold rim dry. It's yeah, dried pretty fast so I'm going to take a um, Tombow Mono drawing pen like this and I'm going to draw a chain through the watch, the circle of the watch, linking the chain links. So I want to make it look like the bird is carrying the watch like that. Now I'm going to use some Ranger glossy accents and I'm going to put a circle over the face of the watch. It's clear and it's shiny and it'll make it look like a watch crystal. So see how that's shiny now? It makes it look like that watch is almost real. So now that has to dry really well before you can put anything over it so you don't have anything damage or stick to that image and it'll need to dry for a couple of hours. So I'm going to put it aside and now I'm going to paint the back side of this watch face. I'm going to paint the back side with some metallic gold paint. I glued my paper doll girl to the page and I have her with her little toe on top of the, the um, top of this pocket watch thing that's popping up from off the bottom of the page so that's kind of cute looks like she's balancing on that and this is this is drying it's still got a little ways to go and then this piece there's the front I did the edges in gold and the back in gold paint and this is going to go obviously in place where it goes and why I didn't glue this part down is to give a little tab to have this top part of the watch go under and then I don't want to put it in place because I don't want to ruin that but to show you what I'm going to do I'm going to take this little tiny hinge it's as flat as I could find and it's the smallest hinge I could find and I'm going to glue it to this and I'm going to glue it to my page and because this is cardboard I'm going to need to make a little tiny strip of cardboard to go underneath this side of the hinge to put down here on the page so that it's the same level otherwise my hinge won't sit flat but I'm going to glue my hinge to cardboard and the cardboard to the paper and then the hinge to this and once the hinge is in place 
then I can put this into place right here. My hinge is in place and it just needs to dry and it's got a shim on the bottom part and it all needs to dry. It's been glued and I use some um, metallic Nuvo drops. These are the crystal Nuvo drops in silver crystal and I put those on the gems because there were gems on the front of the pocket watch so it'll make it sparkly and make them look like real gems. So now I'm going to put that aside and let that dry. And I'm going to let that dry for an entire 24 hours. I'll let that glue really set up and to not cover this piece because um, glossy accents, if you put something over it too soon, especially with that being painted gold on the back, they could stick together and I don't want it to ruin this because it's just, it's just going to be such a neat effect. So what I'm going to do now is to just work on the rest of the page and what I'm going to do first is since the bird has red and her shoes are red her hat is gray and there's a lot of gray up here so it needs some contrast I'm going to go ahead and make her hat red use an Arteza brush pan in red and I'm just going to color that outside edge of the hat to make it red and if it's not bright enough I may end up going back over in paint red over gray kind of makes it dark I don't know it'll still look it'll still look okay I just think that this hat needs some contrast instead of it being all gray and it's got a real feather so I'll just push that aside these brush pens are great especially for um, adding color to magazine images changing the color of things that are like a magazine image. So that looks a little bit better, but I think I think the hat looks better. I added the yellow hat band, made the hat red, colored in the clock image, and gave her a little bit of uh, sparkly cheeks some blue on her eyes, all just using Posca pens. And now I'm going to do the lettering on the page while I'm waiting for this to dry. So I may do some more to the letter, lettering, but for right now, I think I'm going to leave it there. And uh, next I'm going to add some um, doodled swirls behind all the clock images. Favorite way to do that is to take a fine point Pasca pen and to make my initial trail that's going to go behind so that I have the basic shape of it. And I want it to look like that. So see if you can see that. So it starts there and it goes there and it goes around. So that's how I make my initial start. And then I come back in and I just do more stipple dots to thicken it up. And having that base line down there makes it flow. So let me just doodle around and show you what it looks like.
So I just keep playing around with that and I make parts of it thicker, parts of it thinner. That's what makes it look interesting. I don't do them in pencil. I just do that first line of dots and then I come back in and just freehand put the other stipple dots in to thicken it up in places. I think it just feels more natural and organic if it's not hand drawn in, if it's just dots and you just follow the line and create the movement. And it can make some little dots outside that image and that makes it a little more whimsical looking. See how I'm going a little farther out and that just adds something to it, makes it even more whimsical looking like that. So I'm going to put those all over in the background and it's to give the impression of since this theme obviously is time flies, it's just going to give that movement of the clocks flying around the page. So it's coming along. I'm going to work some more on my little white dots, my little movement in the background. I'm going to work some more on that, but this is dry. And so the last step would be to take my piece that I have with a hinge with the metal hinge on it. And I'm going to slide that underneath that little piece up there that's loose and find where I want this to be in place. And then I'm going to put glue underneath this side of the hinge and let it dry overnight. So here's how it came out. So I've got time flies. So live each day to its fullest. And it's got my little movement in the background with the white swirls. And um, what I did with this, I did end up taking a needle and thread and sewing through the bracket of the um, of the hinge because glue just wasn't going to cut it. The glue would uh, tear away from the paper that was put on here with matte gel medium so it just wasn't going to work. So I just did it with needle and thread. But anyway, my purpose of this, and I'm going to put my finger here until it's more solid, is that so you can open this pocket watch and in it is the bird flying with a watch in its mouth. So it is the uh, metaphor of time flies so the bird is carrying a watch so time is flying so that's my fun little thing and then if you hook it underneath that tab it hooks and stays and once this is dry and it's solid I won't have to hold on to it to open it but there's my cute little movable pocket watch and my paper doll girl that I made I showcased her in the last Paper Art Doll Parade so you can check her out there and um, the rest is just collaged images from magazine watches and things. In fact, you know what? These little um, ones that I embossed don't really stand up enough. I'm just going to take a little Distress Ink. This is Gathered Twigs and just kind of go over that so that that stands out better, much better. In fact, I'm going to go along this edge a little too. grunge up the edge and make it kind of a border. I like that. So I'm just taking my Distress Ink and going over my raised image so that it stands up more. Much better. So there it is. I hope you enjoyed this. It was super fun. I had a ball during this page. I had the idea in my head um, with this paper doll and uh, nobody gave her a home and I said to myself, you know what, I've got the perfect idea for a Time Flies art journal page and this is a super cool message too for, you know, live each day. Time is going fast and you need to do what makes you happy and love the people that you love. Tell them that you love them and enjoy your life because before you know it, time flies. So have a good day. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this art journal page and that it gave you some inspiration and ideas. Go make art in your journal because art soothes the heart. Mm -hmm.